Uh, please uh, join me in welcoming the two-time Academy Award-winning director of Miss Sh Sharon Jones, Barbara Koppel, together with the star, Miss Sharon Jones. So we're so happy to have you here, both of you here. Um, and uh, you know, this is this is going to be a conversation uh, about the film, a little bit also about sort of Barbara Barbara's process. Um, and then we will have some time for questions from the audience as well. Um, but you know, to to start things off, um, it's it's basically the same question for both of you, but from your different perspectives. Um, how did you come to agree to this project, and how did you come to make this film? You want me to start? Yeah. OK. <laughs> All right. Alex Cabden, where are you? Right there. there he is. <laughs> this was all his idea. <laughs> he, he brought it to VH1, to um, Steve Mintz and Brad Abramson, and said, I think there should be a film done about Sharon Jones. And I had done a film for them called Woodstock Now and Then. And they said, well, we think we just have the right people for you. And so in came Dave Cassidy, who's here somewhere, our producer, and me. And I'm just so honored and happy that that happened. And, and Sharon, so how did, how, like, what was the process for you? Did, did somebody come to, come to you and say, we want to make this film about you? How, how, what was your role in it? And could you have said no? Like, what, what, is, your, what is your take on well, letting your <laughs> life be, be put on screen like this? Oh, well, at first, my manager, Alex Kevin, he did ask me, um, you know, you got all like, no. You know, I don't, I don't have a story. They're like, how are they going to follow me, you know, with this cat? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you know. And he was like, you know, no, this is, you know, there's a story there and this is going to be good. And plus, meet Barbara and, and Dave and these guys are, you know, you know, they really like you. And Barbara was really, I mean, when I met her and Dave, you know, the camera guys, look at that. How could you tell that? No. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> look at that face. How could you say no? Right. And so you, I, I was like, well, you know, are you going to be in my face all the time? And yes, they were in my face all the time. <laughs> and um, but Barbara and Dave, they assured me, you know, they made me feel so comfortable. And one thing I didn't want, I didn't want one of those, um, what you call those? Reality, reality shows. <laughs> I'm like, this is not going to be a reality show. <laughs> right. You are not going to get me in my bed in the morning waking up like, <laughs> you know, and I, di I didn't want that. And there's certain things I told her I did not want on, on film. And they respect that. Mm -hmm. and. and once that happened, I felt comfortable and relaxed, and, and now I'm so glad that everything happened. And, and every time I see it, and I get to see the movie, I'm, this will be my fourth time when I mm. see it probably the next night. Each time I cry, I, I laugh in that same spot because I can see the passion and the love that Barbara and the film crew had for making a movie. It's like the passion I have for my music. And so I saw that, and, and I'm so glad that I did not fight that. And, That's great. And everything. You're going to make yeah. me cry. <laughs> I know. See? Thank you. So, yeah. so, That's so, so nice. To, to talk a little bit about sort of that first interaction, though, mm -hmm. from Barbara's perspective, um, how, like, how long did you meet for? Uh, how many times did you meet before you kind of came to an agreement? To how quickly was it to, ag to agree to those, to whatever terms there were um, about oh. what to do and what not to do? Oh, OK. Well, the first time um, I ever met Sharon was when she was having her hair cut and shaved. Uh -huh. And that was such an intimate and incredible moment. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it just had a bond between us that I saw you in that kind of situation. And we, you know, just once or twice, Sharon would say, okay, I don't want that, I don't want that. And sometimes she'd like roll her eyes, <laughs> you know, if, if she knew we were coming. And, right. But once we were there, she was just so wonderful. I mean, she's an entertainer, and she's beautiful and persistent and just brings sunshine everywhere she goes. I mean, even sitting in the room where there was chemo. She was the one who was laughing right. and talking to everybody, and she just brought everybody's spirits up, and she's just 
so amazing. And I mean, I just feel blessed and honored to have been able to have been trusted by all of you to have made this film. Captured it, yeah. Uh, and, and so, I mean, that, that sort of answers one question that maybe some people might have is, is sort of when the cancer came up relative to when the project was being formulated. So when you agreed to this, had you had that diagnosis already? Oh, I had already had the operation, right, Alex? I had, I had already had the Whipple. And so um, I was supposed to have been in the hospital, maybe they said five or six days. And I was like, what is this Whipple? And you know, sometimes I, I don't like to hear like people go read and Google it, you know, and, and you read this stuff and you can, you can read into it and it can scare you so bad because they're gonna put, yeah, you could die and you could never get healed and this. And, and it was just so, hearing all of that stuff, yeah. sometimes I, I didn't want to hear it, but I had to hear right. it and, and knowing that the, the Whipple, it would have probably even, if they probably had known earlier, they probably would have been in the hospital to film me running around, because I probably would let you all in there, because I was crazy. I was like, I know the doctor said, well, you know, this is not healing. I was like, I'm getting out of this bed. You know, I was gonna, I got up, I wanted to walk, but I had also got an infection. Mm -hmm. And so they literally had to take some of the staples out, so now there's a hole in my stomach like this that had to heal, you know, and it took like a couple of months to heal. And so if they would have been there earlier, they probably would have filmed that because I probably would have let them film it. And but it was really tough. Yeah. And so when they saw me, I was at least doing a little better. You know, a few right. weeks had went by. <laughs> and so I was putting on that strong face, you know. And, and how important was it for you that, uh, that this process, this process of, of combating the cancer was filmed, that the story is out there for people to see? At first, like I said, I didn't want to, but it, didn't, it wasn't about me anymore. It was about my fans, mm -hmm. and it was about me, and it was about my band. You know, I, I knew, even though I was sick, but it was just something about me performing, me being on that stage. Me laying in the bed, because when I was home, I didn't even listen to my music. I couldn't even get the music in my head because I couldn't sing. So anytime I couldn't <sighs> take in mm. air to breathe, I didn't want to sing. I didn't even want music around me. But once I was able to start, and the filming was there, and now I know that I'm preparing. Now I'm doing this. I'm sitting at goal. I got February come. I got a show to do in February. I got to be ready for February. Am I going to be ready? You know, this is June, July. And, you know, and I'm seeing the way I can barely walk. And am I going to be ready? But the filming was catching that. And I felt that my fans can see what I'm going through with and feel what I'm going through with. And not only my fans, someone out there with cancer can know that just because you got the cancer, don't give up, you know, you be a fighter, you know, not necessarily just ready to give up, but I'm not ready to give up and I'm, and that's why I'm still fighting now. So that, Barbara to put that more fight, gave yeah. me a goal, something to go towards and to finish. And I had to get back out there because that's my money, yeah. <laughs> that's my job. <laughs> right. So I don't work, bills pile up and, and, and yeah, another motivation, yeah. Yeah. And so for, for Barbara, as a storyteller, this, this, the presence of this concert, this sort of goal, the end goal in mind for, for Sharon uh, as part of this process, I mean, in many ways that's fantastic because that gives you something to structure the film around, but, you know, obviously the way you film, you're, you're just filming what's there, what's going on, and you're structuring it later. Talk a little bit about, like, what, what were you thinking in terms of the storytelling structure as you were making the film? How much time did you know that you were going to shoot for? How much did you end up shooting for? Um, if you can talk a little bit about that sort of part of the process. Well, my process may be different than other people's. Uh, I think that I don't want to leave a stone unturned. I don't want to miss a moment with Sharon. Uh, and so we would be there, you know, as much as we possibly could and try to really get those intimate moments. And, you know, you don't know when a film is going to be over. I mean, a lot of times, like, you might think, oh, well, this might be it, but no, something else happens, and you just really need to be there for it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love more than anything, is not having to stop, and not having a deadline, and I never think of things while I'm filming. You let, 
your whole agenda just totally out of your mind and all I wanted was for Sharon to bloom and mm -hmm. to be herself and to go with her. Right. And on a, on a practical, oh, sorry, did you have oh, something? No, yeah, and from what she's saying, just watching him, you know, film this stuff like that and catching me, you know, there were some scenes, like there's a, that church scene mm -hmm. that they caught, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think, if he had to miss something, was no way. <laughs> He was like, I miss this, could you do that again? <laughs> He'd have been, no, you like, know. I, they never did that. And we have did another another church scene in, in, in the South, and they filmed so much stuff, and I, I wondered, how in the world, all these hundreds of hours of filming, right. are they gonna capture this story in an hour and a half? Right. And to see that, to see certain scenes, and to see them capture that, it was really, and sometimes I would just mess with their head, you know, because <laughs> they would be in the room and I'm like doing, you know, just sit there and paint, right? you know. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, how long can you just sit there and paint with a camera on you and you're supposed to pretend they're not there? Right. And so I would just mess with Dave's head after a while, I go like, well, is that enough right now? Like, stop talking to us, we're not here. I'm like, yes, you are here, you know. <laughs> I would make them laugh, you know, just put some humor in it, but. Yes. They had to, and they captured a lot of stuff, which is. And I was gonna say, I think and we might have the trick. And it was uh, important too for us to catch you in quiet moments. Yeah, they had to because catch you're very chatty. <laughs> 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 I know, and, I, and that got to me after a while, just sitting there. Like you could let hear cricket, cricket, cricket right. in the background, you know. <laughs> and I would make them laugh like, "Don't talk to me. I'm not here. Yes, you are here." So, you know, so. And I do. Th I think we might have the, the singing in church uh, clip that we could play. Oh if, yeah, if that's something we can do. That would be nice to show them that that clip, the yeah. church clip, how because do we, how he do we captured do that? Oh, yeah. he captured that whole that whole song, and that wasn't something, you know, people don't go to church or, or you don't have that type of thing happen in your church. We Pentecostal church, the spirit comes over me, and that's something. You know, on, on stage, I, I shout and I go there because that's put in the church. But in church, that was for real. That wasn't play. That was a spiritual moment. I'm, I mean, I was out of mind, out of body. Just mm. something came over me. And, and that was the first time I had sang in months. So I wasn't even able to walk. That was the first time wow. singing. And so that, that whole scene, you guys, was just something that just like, and, and that I knew that I was going to be ready in February. I knew God had me, and, and he didn't bring me this far to leave me, so I knew I was going to be ready. Yeah, um, and I have to give credit to, to our director of photography, oh. Gary Griffith, who's a director in his own right. He's done a, a feature film called Lissapod, and mm. whenever we go out filming with him, you know, we know he's going to capture the story. He may be grumpy when we say, okay, there's something here, like, you know, push us away. But he got that, this entire piece in that. one yeah. take. I wow. mean, we cut it to shorten it a little right, right. bit with a cutaway, but he got everything from singing and dancing and then sitting down yeah, in amazing. one take. It's so... So let, can we take a look at that uh, part of that scene? Well, we could talk about sure. the beacon. Let's, let's talk about the beacon, yeah. Oh. Uh, well, from my point of view, I knew that this was the first time that Sharon was really going to sing in front of an audience in maybe seven months or more. And it was incredibly emotional because we were backstage and I was filming you and you just said, I don't know who this Sharon is going to be. I don't want to be the Sharon that sits in a chair and doesn't dance and doesn't move and you were you know really upset and you could see you behind the stage holding that cup and shaking for a moment and then you just got out there and you killed it the audience loved you yeah. there was amazing adrenaline it was just so beautiful and i've always wondered what you were thinking when you were sitting and holding that cup and then going out on that stage. That, that was my prayer. I was just like, Lord, um, not only to pray for myself, but it's like the band, you know, the band members, you know, give them the confidence, you know, get in their fingers, get in their hands. And my thing was just get in my body, anoint it, take this pain away. Let me remember my lyrics. Just give me the strength to get out there and do that show. And that's what I was saying. I just wanted that strength, you know. 
to be able to do it. And also the band really had your back if they, oh, they felt did. you were I short of breath or. Oh, and I have to watch how I present myself to the band because I can come in like, yeah, I feel all right. <laughs> you know, I'm okay. And if I'm like this, then they're gonna be playing like. Go, I'm all right. Come on, we got this. We got this. Even if I'm not feeling that, I have to do that to them because they'll come in with like, all right, Sharon feeling okay, let's go. But if I go like, I'm, I'm really okay. And they're like, you sure? So I have to like, <laughs> so I really have to. I, and I've learned that over the last couple of days too. Um, it's been a struggle doing some of these shows um, with the neuropathy from the chemo. And as, as of today, I just came from taking chemo this evening. And they gave, they used to give me two, but um, I told the doctors I don't want to take the one that's causing the neuropathy. Because to me, if that's going to stop me from going on stage, I mean, my pain and I'm hurting and I can't dance, then it's defeating my purpose. And I don't want to lay home and take medicine and wait to die either. So I want to be able to move. And if I decide to stop, if I can't go on stage, at least let me be. Let me be able to go fishing. Let me be able to do something without not being able, you know. So I want to keep going. And I'm not ready to give up yet. So I'm praying that this chemo, I can do without it or they can find something else. I'm going to find another alternative. But um, I, I want my health on the stage. Definitely. I want my energy. And, and you're, who are you opening for? Who oh, are you oh, touring oh, with? I thought I had a t-shirt no, on. I've no. got a, I've got a, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hall and Oates. Um, I've been oh, wow. um, opening for Hall and Oates. Um, this is our second leg. We got one more to go with them in September. Fantastic. So I did two and, and a half weeks. And is there a special song that you sang? Oh, or um, something last with, night, yeah. actually. My last night with, on the stage, John Oates did a song. Um, and he wrote this song. He was in high school. Like in, the last time he performed the song was 1968. <laughs> And he got on the, and it's on the stage last night, and, and I sang it with him, the band, we played it. So it was a pretty nice ending to that song. That's should be on YouTube. I hope somebody put it up. Oh, nice. Yeah, so yeah I saw it. You saw it? Yes. <laughs> oh, it was so, fun. So I have a question for you, which, and, and, and Barbara, and you both brought it up, actually, uh -huh. but the film is all, it's about you, but it's also about the Dap Kings in, in a certain oh. way. I mean, it, and th th that's your fantastic band that oh. you, uh, that you're, that you uh, so lovingly work with. Um, their personalities come through in this film as oh. well. And uh, so I guess the question is, like, when you agree to do it, what was it like to talk to your band to say, well, hey, look, we're going to do this, this, yeah, well, this I, fantastic documentary oh, filmmaker is going to come and, you know, oh, film me. I had to go to them. I was like, first, you know, you had a few, yeah. came up in my face, blah, blah, blah. You know, and they really didn't want it. And I was like, what are y'all beefing about? You know, first, I was like, look, guys, look, I was like, you know, first, I was like, y'all up here acting all like y'all are like, you should be glad. Right. <laughs> you know, really, I was like, you should be glad somebody wants to film us. And I said, I know for you, it's just a few, I said, look, guys, it's just a few hours for you. I said, this, they've been in my face for the last few months. And I said, all you got to do is deal with them for a few hours. I said, come on, man. Get over it, man. Don't be showing them. I said, you see the love they have for doing this? Get over that and, and just do it. And come on, just do it. Do me a favor, don't complain. Just do it. And they was like, oh, OK, sure. You I know. mean, when, when we had the, the New York City premiere at Doc NYC, they, that looked like the entire band plus everybody's oh, family was there. Yeah. That, the, such the they love was, that was in the room for you they amongst was, all. They were very happy. They was happy. Yeah. Then when they saw them, said, oh, look at me. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, they was pretty good about it, but I think at the end we all they 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 all went for it. You know? No, they they loved it. They did, after. and also they never showed us that they didn't want us around. Oh, of course not. They better not have, <laughs> <laughs> except once. Oh. But but yeah. we prevailed. They were. I think Alex was having a meeting oh, a with meeting, them yeah. about um, health care and Finance. money right, right, right. and everything, and I had and. That Somebody said, no, you can't. Yes, please let <laughs> yes, me. Let then they said, let's get a little bit of it. And that's, again, yeah. just let y'all catch a little of it, and then y'all go. You're not going to get the whole business. But that's another thing. Um, when I saw that film for the first time, I mean, thank God my band members, they wasn't going to come to me while I'm in the hospital, find out about Binky lost his job and his wife right. and people losing their apartments by Gabe not being able to get loans. They didn't tell me these things because that would have, Probably, mm. uh, you know, and so they had enough love.
to not even let me know these things. They dealt with this. So when I saw that the first night, that's when I found out what my band and what we wow. all went through along with me. So I wasn't the only one going right. through. Right, exactly. So, yeah. so we, we can show that, the Singing in the Church ch clip you if you'd can. like. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. Church, so yeah. let's show Lisa some and of that. Yeah. No, you got to see that whole got thing. Whole, see the whole thing. Okay. Whole thing. So it's a great, it's a fantastic clip. It's just clip. a little scene because you'll know what we talked about it, so at least you can know. Absolutely. So yeah, so so you said earlier, so that we, when that happened, you knew you knew you'd be ready for. I knew I was gonna be ready because you know, I I had it. I, yeah. I see, I still had it, and you know, and I just felt God had answered me right there, and yeah. he he was gonna bring me through. I I was gonna do that show. I knew. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, you're a performer, obviously, but um, you know, when you got up there and you're gonna sing, like you knew the cameras are on you, but at a certain point, yeah. it went away. You that don't. Camera, like, I didn't even think right. about that camera. I had right. forgot all about that camera yeah. being there. Yeah, that wasn't. Yeah. That was. That was. I ain't get the camera. Camera didn't have to be there. I would have did the same thing with right. the camera. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's really interesting uh, when you make documentaries because people forget about you. Um, yeah. And their lives are so much more important. I mean, here's Sharon, you know, this warrior who's not afraid of anything. And the last thing she cares right. is whether there's a camera there or not. It's right. all about how she's relating to her audience, how she's relating in the church, what she's going mm -hmm. through in her mind. And yeah. so those are the kinds of conflicts and struggles that you're able to film. and. And, and you're non-existent. Yeah, yeah. And because what they're doing in their lives is yeah. so much more important than you know just having a camera there. Abs absolutely. But for us as documentarians, it's a treasure. Absolutely. <laughs> you know when you get these wonderful moments. So so um, obviously you've made a f you've made several films about music and uh, music and as as a larger concept. Woodstock and the uh, Dixie Chicks film as well. Um, Woody Allen. Yeah. What so what draws you to to working with subjects that are involving music? Because obviously you're not just making a concert film. You're making something much more than that when you're doing these projects. So what what draws you to these these particular kinds of subjects? Uh, well, it's not just about music, it's about people, and it's about really seeing who they are as individuals, and if they happen to be a celebrity, mm -hmm. they're not a celebrity 24 hours a day, they're just real people like everybody else going through struggles. I mean, you know, filming the Woody Allen film was just mm, right. wild. I mean, my first meeting with him was I knew like, okay, maybe I have 20 minutes with him because Woody doesn't like to talk too long to anybody. So we first started talking about uh, David Blaine, this magician okay. who's wonderful that we both knew. And then I figured, okay, Barbara, get to the point, get to the point, you got it. So I said, you know, Woody, if you have me film this, I have to be able to film everything. I have to s do whatever I want to do. And he said, that's okay with me. And I went, wow. okay, I'm on. <laughs> right. But, yeah. but right. it's, it's about people. Yeah. And it's about their stories and whether they sing or whether it's Mariel Hemingway mm -hmm. talking about you know, seven suicides in her family or the coal miners of Eastern Kentucky fighting for a right to have a union, and it's, it's about the people. And it's about the resilience. That's another th a theme yeah. that comes through your work as well, which is obviously very much it, and it with, with the Ms. Sharon, Ms. Sharon Jones as well. Um, I, I guess, I, I mean, I'd actually love to take some questions from the audience as well. We do have some time before we have to wrap things up, but I just want to make sure we do have time for the audience. If there's any questions you have for Sharon or for Barbara. Yes, please. Actually, no, I was a little, you know, but no, I got right in and, and watched the preaching and went right back into the church after a few minutes, you know. I came through and I realized, I'm, oh, I'm okay, yeah, yeah. Then you look around like, did I just do that? <laughs> you know, you know, like, yeah. So well, you, ha you had a shortness of breath, though, because... Yeah, because I was like, the first yeah. time I exerted that kind of energy. Yeah. So, you know. There are other questions? 
We can, oh yes, please. Uh, my question is more on the cancer uh, aspects of the movie, and the question is essentially uh, how much of it goes into your chemotherapy and, uh, and other treatment, and subsequently, what do you intend to do with this movie with respect to cancer awareness? Oh. Right, so, so one question is sort of the, how much cancer is part of this story and how much it goes into the details with well, chemotherapy. It's, it's a lot, as you watch the movie, we got a lot of me, right, in, inside the um, Bassett, going to the centers, um, seeing different doctors. So we got a lot of that. I was yeah. as amazed to see how much of the cancer, me going to, to the centers and stuff was in there. And even when they got me doing the CAT scan where they saw something else and it was coming back and they thought it was and then it was like a the scar tissue. So it was, it was pretty, you, you'll see a lot of that in there uh, of the movie. And the, the second part is uh, any plans around cancer awareness uh, using yeah. the film? Yeah, when I was at your great festival, Nantucket, yeah. um, many people in the audience had gone through um, what Sharon had gone through and they just said that this was the most hopeful, mm. wonderful film, and they were crying yes. through it, and you know, your shoulder was wet at the end of it as they told you their story. Mm -hmm. yeah. And stars, um, who are our distributors, are now calling different organizations and hoping that you know we'll have one night where we show in a hundred different places, you know, the films for, you know, cancer warriors. And, and a lot of, um, I get a lot of, f from people in the audience, like saying like, they're amazed that who go through what I go through with, and they keep telling me, how do you do what you're doing? We go through this and I can barely move. And it makes me wonder too, how, how do I go through that? And, and it's, it's Amazing, because sometimes, I honestly, you I like coming down those steps, like getting up, it, it just seems like I could just barely lift my leg. Or I'm on that stage and I'm like, how am I gonna do this tonight? And when I walk on that stage, that pain literally goes away. And it could be gone for that time on the stage and I'll sing, all right, good. And I'll go off and sometimes, maybe before I get to my dressing room, I'm like, <laughs> you know, the pain is back, but I'm amazed that when I get on that stage, how just, it's like a anointing, my body just, psh, the pain just goes away. Yeah, it's um, amazing. Sharon and I were, um, and Megan, were at um, AFI Docs in Washington, and we saw the film, and the whole audience just loved every second of it, and they, cried and they laughed and they hooted and they cheered. And Sharon, when you did your Q&A, you were just so full of love and adrenaline and yeah. you took a picture with everybody. You were the last one to leave. Yeah. <laughs> you said, isn't there anyone more who <laughs> wants to talk to me? <laughs> I mean, it was, it's just amazing what wow, people can give back right. and then yeah. what Sharon will give back in return. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a force of nature, really, yes. Yeah, that's, that's what I Absolutely. Okay. Uh, other questions? On this right. side? No? Um, okay. So, uh, I do want to ask, so, uh, how much time did you actually film as, an, as a whole? Well, we filmed over a three-year three period. Years. And in that, so since that time that the film, two and a half, three? Well, give us three. <laughs> <laughs> Give them three. So at what point, at what point, Sharon, did you see the film? Was it when it was finished, when it the premiered? First, the first, um, the one in Toronto. You just hold them. Yeah. To uh, Toronto. The first time I saw it was in Toronto. At yeah. the world premiere, right? Yeah. Right. And what was the most surprising thing for you that, that was in the film? Um, that church scene and, <laughs> and one other scene where um, I cursed the band out. Oh. Okay. Thanksgiving dinner for that dinner. Oh, that's Just right, Just me yes. telling y'all y'all haven't seen it, so when you see it, because it was like, I'm, I'm the type of person, you know, um, I'm, I'm who I am, you know, I'm, I'm natural. And church people know me, they, if they've known me all my life, they know, don't get Sharon Mack, because boo, she's gonna turn to a sailor, and stuff just gonna fly out of her mouth. But that particular scene, I didn't realize, because I was really angry, and I was hurt, and 
I said some stuff, and then when I saw it, so if I had saw that problem before, I probably would have asked her, could you take that out? So I'm glad I didn't see it because <laughs> Me no, too. It, really, it, <laughs> really, it really did capture, that was a side of Sharon that people need to see too. You know, once yeah, I saw it. Yeah, but then you made up with Dave yeah. Guy in two I minutes know. and but it was still, let it go. Can you, but wait, can you wait now? This to come out Friday. My whole church is going to be there. Everybody going to be sitting there like, hey. And I'm going to come out with you. <laughs> <laughs> because my doctor, Dr. Leonard, he was like, are you the grown man? He was like, Sharon, those words came out your mouth. I don't know where they came from either. Did it? <laughs> so yeah, you know, but yeah, so that scene. But other than that, and now I look at it like, yeah, everything in the movie told my story. So that was and, my story. And too. you're the real deal. I yeah, mean, and I got angry. You never, but you never <laughs> give anybody any BS. Never. I mean, you just, if you feel something about me or somebody else, you say it, whether I like it right or not. Then. Not so behind her back and wait for it later no. on. I'll tell you right straight That's up That's right, right? Yeah, you're yeah. the genuine article. Gotta do that. Gotta yes. be straight. Be true. Yeah. You live better. You feel happy. Mm -hmm. Live a good life. <laughs> And I guess, Barbara, this is a question for you. I mean, you've had, uh, you, you still have, but have had a very long career in documentaries, working with different subjects with films like Harlan County. How, how much do you stay in touch with your subjects oh. after you film? And how long, how m obviously the film just came out last year, uh, I mean, debuted last year, but how much interaction have you had with Barbara, uh, sorry, with, Sh with Sharon during the editing process and, and up till the point where it premiered? Well, during the editing process, I don't think we did too much. We yeah. did too much. It was more with, Alex and I think Alex and Austin came in once or twice yeah. just to look at something right. and then they'd be sitting there and liking it so much. I would say to them, so do you want to see more? And they would say, oh no, we have meetings to go to. <laughs> so <We're> always <laughs> they, they would leave because then I get all excited when they like it. But um, throughout all my films, I mean, this is also my extended family. Right. And I'm still in touch with people in Harlan County or American mm -hmm. Dream and almost all of my films. She's still in touch with Oprah. <laughs> I'm trying to get you get right up, on that Oprah. show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you're still in touch with Oprah, right? Okay. Right. None of these stuff. So, you, oh, one oh, other so thing, yes, just one thing. Um, when I saw that film the first night, <laughs> Barbara was sitting like down in front of me. Is all I could see was this. <laughs> <laughs> and then she was like, <laughs> if I'm crying, she was like. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I saw her looking. Every time I looked, I see her like. <laughs> I'm like, okay, all right. But yeah. that's, that's so true. Yeah. I, most filmmakers, when they're showing their films, leave. Yes. I never Barbara did. never leaves. Right you face, always right I don't want to miss a moment. Yes. And she's taking pictures. She's, Sharon, <laughs> Sharon's laughing. Now she's crying. You know, so it was good. Well, but you have to understand that when I'm doing another film and, you know, I feel really lonely or something, I'll get to remember this. And this really gives me the energy to go on. So It was, it was fun. It That's was great. Good. It was good watching her. Watching well, her watch me. Absolutely. Well, I want to I want to make sure we remind everybody that the film opens this uh, this Friday, the the 29th. Yeah. Um, so if you haven't seen it yet, please go see it. Tell everybody about it. Um, if there's anything else that you want to say before we, we wrap things up? Uh, I think that if you go and you see this film and tell your friends about it, uh, one of the things that Sharon Jones really wants is to sell a million records. And that's our goal. <laughs> Watch the film, <laughs> buy the record. <laughs> so no, I hope that's you'll that's all goal. go, tell everyone about it, buy some records, and help her reach her you goal. Know, we're independent that label That sounds doable. Here. We can we're do independent that. We're independent label, you know. <laughs> you know, this all. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you both, Barbara and Sharon, for joining us here uh, at the, the Film Study of Lincoln Center. Make sure to see the film. Thank you so much for bringing this uh, conversation to right. us. And thank, thank you. you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right.